Hi, my name is Bente, I'm the Norris Witch and I am so friggin' excited for today's video because Cross Crow Books approached me again and they want me to do another review on one of their author's books. And I am so extremely excited because not only is this one of my favorite books ever and one of the books I am working with most often in my normal everyday practice, but I think this was literally meant to be because this book is Icelandic Plant Magic Folk Herbalism of the North by Albert Bjorn. This one you have probably already heard about it, maybe even already on my channel, I don't know. But this book is about Icelandic magic and they approached me with this idea when I was in Iceland and literally a few days before I met Albert for the first time. So I think this was meant to be. This was, it's just so funny. This was such a coincidence. <laughs> but yeah, I'm extremely excited about reviewing this book for you because I literally already read it before Cross Crow Books published it. So I'm extremely about ex excited about this. To be 100% transparent with you, yes, this is a paid review, but as I said, I owned this book already when Albert self-published it. I bought it myself already and I loved it already before Cross Crow Books approached me to review this. So this is a very, very honest <laughs> review. I mean, I'm always reviewing books for you honestly, but I read it even before they approached me. So let's go. So, as I already said, the title of the book is Icelandic Plant Magic Folk Herbalism of the North. Let us quickly read the blurb. Powerful flora of the distant north, the magic of Iceland is known to all those who have set foot on the seemingly desolate rock in the North Atlantic. Mystical staves, crafty hidden folk and the dangerous ghost of long dead priests all have their place within the magic of, of the island. However, our plant life tends to go unnoticed. Hiding in the shadows of a misty mountain or thriving in the warmth of a geothermal stream, the plants of this island hold potent magic that is waiting to be called upon. Magic thrives in the ice and snow. Icelandic plant magic explores an often neglected area of Norse magic. A synthesis of traditional magic, folklore and modern magical practice, it includes a rich index of plants, their properties and uses, as well as descriptions of magical tools and practices. It offers the reader a chance to experience another world of knowledge and the magic of nature. And this describes it pretty well. Yes, there is a huge emphasis on plants and how to use these specifically Icelandic plants in magic, specifically in Icelandic practices and Icelandic folk magic, but there's also more to it. It's not just an herbarium. It's not like Scott Cunningham's herbarium. You, pr you probably know it. I can't remember the name right now, but this is not just an herbarium. You know, this is, this is a pretty thick, <laughs> nicely sized book. And it's not only an herbarium. There is a big, big herbarium in this and also a fungarium, which I was so excited about. I feel like mostly you will find a lot of info on herbs everywhere, but fungi usually aren't talked about that much. So I was very excited to see that there is actually a fungarium in this book. But there is so much more in this book. I think the way in which this book is formatted is very, very handy because before we even go into the herbarium, we have valu valuable tips for connecting and working with plant spirits, for example. We have information about the planetary and elemental rulers for whoever isn't really familiar with that topic, because not everyone practices like elemental or planetary magic. There's also a small section on things that you should be remembering and doing when gathering plants and herbs because it's not just like you go outside and rip up a plant and take it home with you. That's not how it works. So I think it's great that this section is in there. And there is a section about Icelandic pronunciation and uh, Icelandic terms. There is like a, a glossary about Icelandic magical terms, which is very, very handy because a lot of people always struggle with like what terms are the correct ones. 
and uh, how to even pronounce all of these words. This is amazing because there's a pronunciation guide in this book. I didn't expect that and I love to see it. And after all of these introductory sections, we will find the herbarium and the fungarium. And I think this is so smart because as, for example, a beginner who hasn't really worked with herbs and plant spirits yet, I think it's amazing to have all of these sections in the book before even diving into the plant. That way, what cannot happen is that a person just goes out and tries to, yeah, basically just rip off the plants from the ground and take them home and then dabble with it. No. If you want to work with the plants, you have already read through all of these introductory sections, you know how to approach plant spirits, you know how to connect with them, how to feel them, you know what all of this stuff with planets and elements means, so you are very well prepped to work with plants and fungi. <laughs> then in the middle of the book comes the herbarium and fungarium and let me tell you, it's so great because there are so many plants in this book that you will find in no other books because they're just plants that mainly only grow in Iceland sometimes. But there are also a lot of plants that you will find in other books and that you will also find in a lot of other areas of the world. So it's not like you get this book and you can't do anything with it because all of these plants only grow in Iceland. There are also a lot of plants in this book that you will find in a lot of other areas of the world. That is why I am using this book all the time because it's it's not just Icelandic plants. There is so much overlap between the plant world in Iceland and other parts of Northern Europe. So of course all of the plants or a lot of the plants in this book I will find in my area, which is very great. But as I said, there are also plants that you will only find in Iceland. And I think reading about that is very, very interesting because it's so different from how other plants work and how they are worked with. In the herbarium, you will find for every single herb the English name, so that it's easier to find, the Icelandic name, the Latin name, of course, the intentions that you can work on with that plant, so for example, love, healing, banishing, whatever, the planetary and elemental ruler, of course, and also entities or gods that these plants are associated with. So if you want to maybe make a devotional incense blend or something, then you can look at that. And then you have a huge section on Icelandic folklore around that plant. Sometimes you also find some English folklore because of course, the author is British, so you will sometimes even find English folklore about some of these plants. You will also find how these herbs are worked with in the Icelandic tradition. So if you want to know how some herbs, for example, that you will find in other areas of the world are worked with specifically in Icelandic magic, then definitely get this book. I think it's extremely interesting because sometimes it seems like the Icelandic usages of some of the plants are very different from like the British centric uses that you usually see in books. For example, in Scott Cunningham's book that I still can't remember the name of. And yeah, I already said how amazing it is that there is a fungarium in this book. I think that's so fun because I have never tried working with fungi but now fall is here. So I am very, very excited about trying to find these fungi because I, I have no clue about how to find and identify fungi. So I'm very, very excited to see if I can maybe find some of the fungi from this book and how I can use them and work with them and how to approach these spirits because I would think that they probably are a lot different than normal plant spirits. After the herbarium and the fungarium part in the book, you will find a huge part of the book that basically goes into what to actually do with these plants. First of all, of course, you will find things like how to make oils, tinctures, bombs, everything like that. Basically how to make tools from the herbs if you don't want to like work with the herbs themselves, but basically incorporate them into other things. That is very, very handy because I always get the question by people like, how do I make oils? How do I make tinctures? How do I make bombs, etc. That is, in this book, it's described in a very simple way because it is very, very simple. So you don't need like a whole book on that. It's described in a very short and concise way. Perfect. And afterwards, there are like entire recipes for oils, for tinctures, for incense blends, which I was very excited about because 
If you know me, you know that I love making loose incense blends and you will find so many, for example, devotional incense blends, but you will also find mixtures for specific ritual intentions and things like that. And what I find very interesting is that, um, of course, I cannot use all of the recipes in this book because I won't find all of the herbs that I need around here. I use the herbarium a lot to just simply get like a grip of what this plant is all about and maybe find some plants that are associated with specific deities or entities. And then I will intuitively put together an incense blend that makes sense for me. And I found that most of, or if not all of the incense blends I've made intuitively very much align with the incense blends in this book. So that was very fun to see. So it's basically like the herbs that you will find in Iceland and here in Germany, they will overlap, they will be the same, but like the Icelandic specific plants that I can't find here, I will just use different herbs for. And that works perfectly fine and the incense blends always smell amazing. So I would guess that the original incense blends that I cannot make sadly, would also smell great. I think one thing that would come in very, very handy for all of my heathens out there is that this book contains a section on the gods and which herbs are associated with them. I think that was so, so good. If you are working with a god or a goddess or you are worshiping them and you, for example, want to make an oil for them that you can uh, anoint yourself with before communicating with them or you make you want to make like a candle for them or an incense blend for them then of course you have to know what herbs are associated with them so if you want to do that you don't have to flip through all of the all of the herbarium and look at all of the singular plants and which entities and gods and goddesses they're associated with you can just flip to the gods and goddesses section and then you will have a very short and concise description of what kinds of plants and herbs and fungi are associated with these specific gods and goddesses. That's very convenient. What I loved to see was that not only are there oils and incense blends in the recipe section, which I feel like oils and, and incense blends you will find in a lot of books, but there are also baths, for example, and like recipes for even edible things. So there's a recipe for a bread for Thor, Thor spread. There's also recipes for vinegars. There's even an ink recipe in there, which I think is so cool. I have never made an ink, but I really want to. So I will definitely check out that recipe. And of course, lastly, this is a plant magic book. So of course, there's not just plants and recipes in there, but there's also a whole spell work and spell crafting section in the book. And if you know Albert, then you know and probably love all of his wonderful Galdrastavir. And of course, in that book are a lot of them. So if you want to work with Galdrastavir, then definitely check out that section. It is amazing. I think there are so many cool and interesting spell work ideas and not all of them include Galdrastavir. So if you're not all about that, then of course you don't have to use them because there are also spells that don't incorporate them. But they're basically workings for any intention that you could think of. Some are very, very specific. I love that. And yeah, those are the contents of the book. I think the contents are amazing. And that is why I also feel like this book is both very suitable for beginners as well as advanced practitioners because it will basically walk you through all of the parts that you need. So it's not like it just gives you herbs and then says, here, have fun with it. It gives you, as I said, a whole introduction on how to approach plant spirits, how to work them, how to gather them, what you have to keep in mind when working with them, what elemental and planetary rulers are all about. It gives you recipes, basically a very, very well-rounded book on anything you can do with herbs, basically, but not only that. And that is why I feel like it's not just a beginner book and not just an herbarium because there are so many things that you can do with the herbs and so many spell work ideas in this book. And some of them I feel like are more advanced. There are also incense blends that are toxic. So there are more advanced things in this book and so many spell work and spell crafting ideas that basically anyone will find something that suits them. It is also incredibly stunning. The illustrations in this book are crazy beautiful. I love it so much. And I mean, it's, it's only black and white, 
But I feel like these illustrations work so well in black and white and I love them. I like the font, I like everything. It's just very, very pretty. It's not like the beauty overshadows the quality of the content, you know? There are some books about witchcraft that only look pretty, but they don't have good content. And this book has both. It's pretty and it has great content. <sighs> I love it so much. As I said, it's, it's one of the books I work with most often because, as you probably know, I have a shop for witchcraft and uh, paganism things. So I make a lot of incense blends, for example. I make a lot of candles. I make a lot of custom things. I make a lot of custom products, custom incense blends, custom candles, custom powders. So sometimes I get approached by a customer with a spell intention that I have to make products for that I have never had to work for. So if you have a new spell intention that you have never cast a spell for, you usually are not very familiar with the plants that work for that intention. And if it's a, a deity, a god or a goddess that you have never worked with or connected with closely, then you also won't know which plants and herbs are associated with them or fungi. So this is where this book comes in handy so much. So, so much. Like whenever I have a spell intention and I don't intuitively know which plants I would use for that, I will literally pick up this book first. I have quite a lot of books, as you probably know, but this book will be the first one that I will pick up and this is not a lie. Like, I don't claim this just for the video because this is a paid review. This is literally true. I, I got this book. This is the second, the second edition that I have of this book. Albert self-published this book before he started working with Cross Crow Books and I already got it when he self-published. And I already worked with that book all the time. I can't praise this book enough. I think it's amazing. I don't even think there are any other books about Nordic plant lore and Nordic plant magic out there. If you know other ones, then put them in the comments because I want them. But I have not come across any other yet. And I think it's amazing. I really, really enjoy connecting with the plants that my ancestors would have also worked with. So I feel like a book like this is so important. I love it so much. I love it so much. I can't praise it enough. So if you have read this book too, then definitely tell me what you thought about it in the comments, because I, I can't imagine anyone not liking it, honestly. I love it too much. By the way, if you're interested in the author, I actually have an interview with him on my channel. I will put it up, I think here, and in the video description so that you can check that interview out too. That being said, patron shout out. Thank you so, so much to Katie Thistle Adam Segregated Facial Hair, Kent, Kelly, Lisa, Brittany, Emerson, Celine, Smalketa, Josh, Virginie, Elinura, David, Kristeny, Rixie Business, Valo, Annalena, Bast, Kirby, Ashley, Erica, Anna, Kristen, John, Phoenix, Anton, Jenny, Maggie, Misty, Amy, Colette, Timothy, Coffee, the honorary Gossip Squirrel, and Bjorn. Thank you so, so much for supporting me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will get the book. <laughs> If you did like it, then make sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up and ring the bell down below so th that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Of course, you can check out my other socials and my shop for ethically and sustainably sourced witchy and pagan goods, which is still closed until September 25th, but afterwards. Feel free to check it out and um, go shopping a little bit. And if you want to support me in another way, then you can of course check out my Patreon. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.